Let's go, Stubby. Are we on? We're live. Hi, everyone. I'm back for another video. It's been a little bit. Sorry, tripping on my skirt here. Uh, I got Mr. Stubby with me. He's going to get a little pet session while I talk to you today. And I'm going to try my best to make this as short as possible. I tend to be long winded and get very in depth, so I'm gonna do my best. But today we're going to talk about L lysine and whether or not you should be using it for your cats. And here is L lysine, backwards for you, I know, but this is what we're talking about. So, what is L lysine? It is an amino acid and why it's typically recommended, often recommended if you haven't heard of it, is a lot of breeders, cat enthusiasts, pet owners, veterinarians, everybody will be touting using L-lysine for cats to help with feline herpes virus, which there is no good treatment for. Um, so this is kind of a second line of defense thing that's that's touted to help. So <clears throat> when I first got into breeding cats years ago, I was recommended this, um, learned about it, and my vet recommended it as well. So we were told at the time to kind of think of L-lysine for a cat, sort of like a multivitamin for a person just um, helps them not get sick as often, helps keep the feline herpes virus at bay, which most every cat in, on the planet is known to have feline herpes virus. It's no different than humans with chicken pox. We all get exposed, we all end up getting it um, <clears throat> from, you know, just contact. So that's kind of what we did. We would be shoveling this into the cat's food every single day, not really thinking much about it. And it wasn't until about, what? Sue would know. Um, she was on here <laughs> a year and a half ago, I think maybe. Um, uh, one of our adopters was part of the FIP trials and I had coordinated the kitty getting to the FIP trial and I was contacting the lead researcher, Dr. Pearson, out at UCLA, who is cat genius guy. I mean, not even cat genius, but just genius. <laughs> you know, biochemist, genetic, molecular genius. And he actually mentioned how I seen and he said, um, you know, that some of the things that they were trying to use for FIP just weren't, you know, they were no better than giving water, just like giving L-lysine for herpes virus. And I was like, huh, really? Because we've always been told to use it. So that sparked me on a mission to do further research and try to really find out, should we be using this or not? Is this helping? Is this hurting? Or is this doing absolutely nothing? So here's what I found in a nutshell. Um, the way that allycine works is it actually has a counterpart in the body um, called arginine and they kind of play upon each other um not even sure what example to give i guess you know uh like oxygen and carbon dioxide let's say if one is up the other's down. If the other's up, the other's down, you know, but in the body they need to stay in, you know, a balance to, have, you know, be functional. <laughs> so L-lysine and L-arginine are that. They're both necessary for the body, um, but they're best to be kept in a ratio. So how L-lysine works is when you take extra L-lysine in your body, it diminishes the action and lowers the production of arginine in the body. And this in turn helps to fight the herpes virus by kind of a roundabout way because the herpes virus likes to flourish on 
arginine and the properties that arginine brings in the body. So that's known, that's studied, but only in humans is that studied. The only, there's not even a lot of studies, but the, the few studies that have been done are in humans for cold sores caused by herpes one in humans only. And sorry, um, you know, clearly the strain of herpes virus that humans suffer with is not the same strain that a cat would suffer with. And a lot of the use of l in people is just anecdotal. People um, have recommended someone try it, someone tries it, they think it does lessen the severity of the cold sore, <clears throat> maybe it doesn't get as big, maybe it doesn't last as long, so they use it. However, there's not a single study in cats um, for l lysine and, and its use on herpes virus at all. In fact, the only thing that I was able to find as far as any type of actual scientific literature was there were a couple studies that had been done in different animals, not just cats, but dogs, and I think they had goats and something else, I think it was ducks or something, and they administered large amounts of L-lysine and the difference was they actually, they administered large amounts of L-lysine and then they tested the arginine to see the arginine levels and unlike how it worked in humans, it actually didn't affect the arginine levels at all, the arginine levels um, didn't go down. So that would show that even if the, this same methodology worked in cats, it wasn't having the same effect that it does in a human body. It wasn't altering those arginine levels at all to really make any difference that way. And then they did find some actually counterintuitive effects of the l scene, primarily when it was given in the range of um, growth. So if they gave it to kittens or puppies, it actually was showing some, some side effects of stunting their growth and slower development and poor development with the higher levels of lysine. Um, now those levels they were giving also were a little bit higher than what we would have recommended in the past for people to do anyway or what your vet would recommend. You know, they kind of, when they do these studies, they, you know, things tend to kind of be extreme. <laughs> um, but that was, that was the facts that I found. So not a lot of facts to go on. And so from what I gathered from the research that is available and what we are now recommending as a cattery from Little News Cattery and what we are practicing is don't give l every single day long term anymore um, because there is a potential of some type of side effect from it being given long term without any real solid good evidence that it's really even going to help the problem that it's recommended for. Um, so what we're doing now is on our cats or anybody that's adopting from us is just using the L-I scene um, sort of like for an outbreak situation. So very similar to if I get sick, I take higher levels of vitamin C and vitamin D to help my immune system during that time, but especially vitamin, well, both. <laughs> if you take a lot of vitamin C, you're gonna get a lot of stomach problems. If you take a lot of vitamin D, that actually can be toxic and do really bad things. So you can only like increase levels for a very short period of time to try to knock down the virus or bacteria that you're fighting. So that's what we're recommending for the lysine. And anybody that's using the powder, so it would be the same thing we've always recommended, 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligrams a day, but only if your cat is having an active outbreak of a cold and you know it's lasting seven to 10 days, whatnot. If they are in a chronic illness situation, they chronically have watery eyes and sneezing, we're not recommending this anymore long, long term for your cats. There are other options and other things that um, can be tried and should be tried versus just loading on 
large amounts of L-lysine that doesn't hold a strong bearing to really do you know a lot of good for that situation so um, hopefully I hit all of the points and everybody understood my mumbo jumbo <laughs> so you know it's still a very good thing to have on hand if you're a cat owner I would have all I seen on hand you know I have it here actually I end up taking it more than my cat because I had flare-ups of little case of shingles a couple times and that's a herpes virus thing for people so I went ahead and slammed this um, two weeks ago my neighbor I let her borrow some because she got shingles and it works great in humans like it really can work you know it's just it's not it's not solid you know for sure how great it's working for herpes virus in cats um, but it's good to have on hand if they have a flare for a couple days you can give them an increased dose and it may help um, but of course you know if they're never sick and you don't know what's going on and they you know they're sick for a few days then of course bring them to your veterinary um, all right so that's it stubby seems really really impressed doesn't he <laughs> he's just sleeping on the job <laughs> so all right thank you everyone bye